Broadcasting from the fabulous Stardust Lanes in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Comedy Central Sports presents Let's Bowl. Tonight, we'll settle a bitter feud between warring neighbors. David McNutt said his neighbor's dog went dumpies on his prized shrubs. His neighbor, Bob Doby Hall, claims his sweet poochie woochie would never do that. They'll settle this tawdry dispute right here, right now, on America's number one indoor bowling show. At all. And I'm Wally Hotfed. Tonight, a pooping dog, a dead shrub, and neighbors at odds. All right, we'll meet our contestants in just a moment, but first, let's say hello to the rest of the gang on Let's Bowl. Uh -huh. Hey, he's the round mound of sound. That's say right. hi to Ernie Jensen. And it does it! Well, not too round, I hope. And now it's my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the coolest band in the universe, Man Planet. Yeah. I love those guys, oh, yeah. and I also love these guys. You know them, you love them. They are the lovely queen pins. Say hi to Amanda and Lisa. Oh, boy. That is pure, uncut eye candy there, people. Also joining us tonight, the Viking Age Club. <laughs> hey, every time a bowler gets a strike or a spare, they'll get a roar, a mighty Viking Arr, battle cry. Odin, help me, Odin. OK, let's meet bowler number one. He's from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Uh -huh. He owns six pair of shoes. Right. He has a bowling average of 120. Please, let's give a big Let's Bowl welcome to Dave McNutt. Welcome to Let's Bowl, Dave. How are you tonight? Doing well, thank you. Uh, what the heck happened to your shrubs, anyway? Well, my neighbor Bob's dog's been over. Uh, he has pooped and urinated all over my shrubs and killed them. You've got a problem with that, apparently. I do have a problem with it. How big are his craps, anyway? Have you seen the size of that dog? Oh, oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, <laughs> bowler number two is also from Eden Prairie. He's got 10 cavities. His bowling average is 150. Let's give a big welcome to Bob Doby Hall. Hi, Bob. Hi, Wally. How you doing? I'm doing well. So, Bob, you say your dog is innocent, right? Totally innocent. Oh, he's innocent. I'm sorry about Dave's shrubs, but uh, the dog's innocent. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I thought dog crap was good for shrubs. I, I crapped on my neighbor's shrubs. <laughs> That's because the bastard was all over my ass about the dirty mattresses I wouldn't take out of my front porch, but... Well, Dave has neglected to tell people that he also has a dog, so it might be Dave's dog. Oh! Whoa. All right! Hey, Dave, what happens if you win tonight? I get the uh, gratification of a win here. I get my 400 bucks back, and Bob and I will maintain our friendship. All right, four big ones, huh? So, Bob, what do you get if you win the match? Well, I'm going to be his friend if I win or if I lose, number one. Aww. Number two is uh, I want Dave to apologize to me and my dog and have us over for dinner. That's nice. Well, you know, they're not just here to settle this rancorous, poopy shrub deal, are they? Ernie, tell them what else they can win. One of them will win a Duluth fun package. Two nights in downtown Duluth, Omnimax theater tickets, and a full day of dog sledding at Bark in the Dark Kennels. Mush, little doggies, mush. Then the lucky winner goes on to play our league bowler for a chance to win a 1991 John Deere snowblower. This eight horsepower monster has a 27 inch cutting path and includes a cozy weather enclosure and counterweight kit. All from the folks at Weekend Freedom in Savage, Minnesota. It's snowy. Whoop de frickin' do. Great prize, especially this time of year. Hey, don't forget, either of our bowlers can use the distraction option at any time during oh, yeah. tonight's match. Now, that means uh, when they deem it appropriate, they can sneak up behind the other one and blast them with an air horn. Just like that. But they can only do it once oh. in the whole match, brown, and brown. Uh, hopefully that will uh, brown, distract them enough to be... uh, screw up their shot. Brown Brown has a head injury. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get them up to the lanes. Bob bowls first, because the person who's been to Las Vegas the most always goes first on Let's Bowl. I guess Bob's been there four times, and Dave only three times. Ooh. Off to a very good start, leaving only the five pins standing. Chopper, this whole thing really strikes home for me. How so? My neighbor really used to bug me and sleep with my wife. Oh. My neighbor gets bent out of shape when I pee in his yard, too. <laughs> oh, that was fast with the distraction option. Not sure it had much Very of an effect. Early. What if Dave's parents had named him Cashew? <laughs> then his name would be Cashew McNutt. That'd be funny. All right, leaves an open frame. So we've got two open frames getting things underway. Let's get Bob up to the line for frame number two. 
I'll tell you what, I think Bob's clandestine practicing is beginning to pay off for him at this point. Yeah, I was drinking with him uh, the other night while he was practicing. You're not supposed to be out with the contestants before the match. You're not supposed to be out with the contestants before the match. Oh, they're shaking back there, Chopper. Ah, uh, not enough. Not enough power on that one. He's going to have to take the three out, knock out the ten. Really? To get the other one? you got to knock the one first? Mm-hmm. You should nick the three and hit the ten. Oh, hey, he does oh, take yeah. out the ten. Still has an open frame, however, after two. Dave is up. If he gets a strike here, he wins the whole shooting match. Isn't that right, Chopper? Well, no, no, Wally. This is only the second frame. There's a lot of bowling yet to come. All oh, right, yeah. Second frame. Oh, oh. leaves a couple of them in the middle. Dave claims he can name at least two dozen NASCAR drivers from memory, Walt. Wow. He doesn't look like a drunken hillbilly. Vikings going crazy over there, Chopper. And the Vikings going crazy. So after two complete, we have 18 for Bob, eight with a spare up for Dave. We got a little bit deeper into this grievance a little while ago, Walt. That's right, Chopper. I, I met with both of them to get the lowdown on all this crap when we went in my pin. Step into my pin. There you go. Hey, Bob. Welcome to my pin. Want a cocktail in here? They've been warmed up four times. I made the sauce out of ketchup and grape jelly. Tell me about this whole dog crap dispute here. Bob has falsely accused me on several occasions that it's my dog killing my yeah. trees and shrubs. He always blames everything that's wrong about his whole yard on me. Are you psycho about your yard? No, I'm not psycho. He's a filthy hillbilly, isn't he? He's a nice guy, you know, don't get me wrong. Does he have a urine-stained back brace? I don't think so. Are you a jerk at work? No. Bob, do you put your own poop in paper bags and staple it to the walls? Uh, no, I don't. Bob, what's your favorite shape of poop? I like it, like when it looks like a big brain, a big throbbing brown brain. Are you sure this isn't just a bunch of bullshit? I'm glad you asked, because no, it's not. I could get a better handle on this if you showed me where it happened on a map. The poop is somewhere in this general vicinity. Yeah. Could, you, could you confirm that? Yep, it is. It's right, uh, Right in here. Who do you think's gonna win this match, Dave? Oh, hands down, I think I can win it. I've seen Bob Bowl and he's terrible. I'll do my best, you know, we're gonna try to resolve this issue. You either have it or you don't. Oh, oh what a mess. Love that pin. What a crappy, <laughs> poopy mess. It is indeed, but we're gonna continue bowling. Hey, right now, the score after hey. two complete, 18 for Bob, eight and a spare up for Dave. Inside bowling just ahead, and lots more. Lots Man more. Man Planet, too, right over there. And the Queen pin. Ooh, gotta love the Queen pin. at a live shot of Apache Plaza in St. Anthony, Minnesota. I bought my first clown painting there many years ago. I love Man Planet. And our dispute tonight is between Dave, who claims his neighbor's dog killed his shrubs by pooping on them, and Bob, the neighbor, who says his dog is innocent as a lamb. While we were away, the bowling continued in the third. Bob led off with a strike in the fourth. Dave rallied with a spare in the fifth. It was Bob with a spare. And also in the fifth, Wally showed me how to make a mini flamethrower out of an orange peel. All right, let's get Bob to the lanes for frame number six. A nice match underway as well. Very close game so far, Wally. Very close, think? Chopper. It's a good game. Ah, he got him. All up. Uh, Boy, these guys are unflappable. You know, this reminds me, I dreamt I pooped in the bed last night. Cut it out. Oh, wait a minute. That wasn't a dream. Oh, jeez. Oh, very nicely done. That was good bowling, wow. Wally. That was practice showing through. Look at the replay. Exactly what he should have done. Precision bowling. Precision bowling. That's what practice does for you, Wally. No question about it. Hey, Wally, look at what I see. Oh, my God. It's the beer pit. It's time for the beer frame. <laughs> When the beer pin appears, one of our bowlers has a chance to win a great prize if they get a strike. Ernie, tell them what they're going to win. They'll win jerky. Yes, a whole case of delicious desiccated meats. That's 42-ounce packages of savory beef jerky from Big Bull Jerky in Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Jerky, 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 jerky. jerky. Dried strips of animal flesh? Say, that's for me. Jerky is by far my favorite food besides liquor. Oh, nope. a little too much action on that one, and uh, we still got a great game underway, Wally. If I was that dog, I wouldn't be grabbing in the bushes. 
No, I'd be doing it in the hot tub, on top of the car, in the barbecue, in the gas grill. On the deck, in the geraniums, germaniums. And fails to convert to spare. That makes our score after six complete 60. And a spare up for Bob, uh -huh. 66 for Dave. And that brings us to inside bowling. You know, uh, we were exploring something here this time that uh, is kind of an offbeat variation. It's called candle pin bowling, Wally. That's right, Chopper. Don't worry if you don't know anything about it. Uh, no one who's normal knows anything about candle pin bowling. So let's take a look. <laughs> Chopper and I headed down to the local Elks Lodge, where the candle pin bowlers were holding their weekly meeting. Oh, my. <laughs> Welcome to candle pin night. And in the spirit of brotherhood among all bowlers, we brought you a gift. Here's a fruit basket for you. Oh, thank you. Boy, that must weigh three stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I brought you some motor oil. It's 5W30. That's great. <laughs> Careful those are open. So, Kevin, uh, <laughs> are you guys all a bunch of potheads or what? Wally! <laughs> It's okay, I'm just ribbing them. <laughs> Here's a candle pin. Now, as you can see, they are much different. These are uh, um, long and... Oh, please, uh, don't, don't touch the pins, please. These are imported. Uh, Falco uh, brought the first five back with him on his uh, first trip to Bristol. So, Kevin, does this unscrew and open up so you can hide a nickel bag in it, or what? <laughs> When you, when you throw the ball, kidding, yeah. that's got to pose some interesting strategy. Yes, it does, actually, uh, because the balls are so much smaller. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that little <laughs> chopper. The, uh, uh, every league can vote on, on, uh, on how, how big their balls are. I like leagues with big balls, like men. Like men have bigger balls than that. <laughs> it reminds me of that ACDC song, Chopper. You know, who's got the biggest balls? <laughs> That's a great song. You should play that at your next meeting, because you don't have the biggest balls. <laughs> Even more important than in 10 pin bowling, ball spin is very important in uh, candle pin bowling. Hey, you guys, look at this. <laughs> oh, I ate too many candles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is any of this crap televised or what? Uh, no, actually, uh, candle pin does not have a television contract. <laughs> You're kidding. You should try it. What's that, Merlin? What? You should try it. Okay, why not? Hey, hand me one of those grapefruits. It's easy. I can do this. <laughs> it's longer than what it looks like. Medieval freaks. <laughs> All right, okay. Maybe. Maybe it is kind of. Maybe it's a little slightly hard. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. It was hard. How about we have a toast, huh? To candle pin. Hey, oh, yes. candle pin. <laughs> Usually I'm always right, but not this time. Apparently, different isn't wrong. I really wanted to hate those candle pin guys, because they're the type I hate. But my prejudice was wrong this once. I had a great time with those lovable outcasts. Huzzah! They were freaks, but I loved them. <laughs> we had a good time while it was a good time. Hey, we have a great game underway as well. We have 60 and a spare up for Bob, 66 for Dave, and we'll invite you to listen to a little Man, Man Planet. Planet. Yeah. Sound, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And Stardust Lanes, we have a great game underway. This is about uh, a dog that uh, pooped on a bush and killed the bush, and now they want the bush replaced. And boy, take a look at the dog. There he is. Oh, beautiful oh, dog. Look at the little puppy. That's not a little dog, Wally. That's a big dog. A big, beautiful dog, nonetheless. All right. Uh, we have a score right now 100 and a spare up for Bob, 94 for Dave. Let's get going in frame number nine as frame we draw nine. this thing even closer. I noticed Bob has a ponytail, Wally. Hmm. I wonder if he thinks he's a girl in the third grade. Oh. Nicely done. 
You know, I really like dogs. I love dogs. I'm a dog lover. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's monkeys. Mo it's monkeys I love. I love monkeys. <laughs> Damn crap, I love monkeys. And he converts to spare. I'll tell you what, Bob's coming through here in the clutch. Here's the replay on that one. Take a look at the reaction shot here. Yeah. Hey, before we get Dave up to the line for the ninth frame, let's go ahead and meet those Viking guys, Wally. That's right, Chopper. I'm with the Viking Age Club, and as you can see, they like to dress up as Vikings. When you, when you recreate Viking battles, do you uh, recreate any other battles, like uh, uh, Civil War, World War II? We have some people who are part of the uh, Civil War reenactment. We have people who are part of the uh, Scottish uh, recreation group, Clan Tartan, and the SCA. What's the SCA? A Society of Creative Anachronism, and those are the lot you... What? Society of Creative Anachronism. Oh, you're way over my head, buddy. <laughs> you, are you guys in Mensa, too, or something like that, or what? <laughs> um, he is. I bet he is in Mensa, aren't you, you bastard? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have been great. Thanks for coming here and having all your renaissance -y crap flying all over the place. Back to you, Chubber. Hey, thanks very much, Wally. Let's get Dave up on the lane for frame number nine. In fact, if he doesn't do well here, it could be all over, Wally. That's right. <laughs> Weird. Damn, that was just so close. He needs to convert this spare, however. Boy, it'd be bad if a tiger or elephant or something crapped on your shrubs, I guess. <laughs> Billy goat, the llama, chopper. Wouldn't that be bad? Last ball right here. He's going to pick it up. Yeah, knocks it down. He's got a spare up in the ninth. And we have a great game underway. 119 and a spare up for Bob. 94 and a spare up for Dave. It's still anybody's game. Don't forget that grand prize a snow tonight. Blower. A snowblower. And a trip to Duluth. Yeah, they're going to have to go up against the vicious league bowler. Oh, I'm scared. I'll need those Vikings to protect me from the league bowler. Ah, far. Welcome back, everybody, to Stardust Lanes in South Minneapolis. We have a great game underway. That's right. Uh, right now, the score is 119 and a spare up for Bob, 94 and a spare up for Dave. All that needs to happen right now, Bob knocks down eight pins. He wins. This is all about a dog that went doo-doo on uh, his lawn and his bushes and are about to be replaced. A I dog think. with shrub-killing feces. Let's get Bob up to the line and see what happens. Remember, all he needs is eight pins. That's right. Yeah. Oh, oh, knocks oh, down seven. Wow. The we tension. still got a game, Wally. That keeps the tension way we up there, We still Tabard. have a game. Have you listened to our mixtapes yet? I'll listen. I promise to listen, Wally. It's I got really Leo Sayre on it, Chopper. You know. up the spare. That's it. Bob's our winner That's today. It. Let's go down and meet the gang. All right, come on up, guys. Bob, congratulations. You're the big winner tonight. Hey, it looks like your dog didn't do it after all. Oh, absolutely. Just like I said, he's innocent. You won the Duluth package as well. That's kind of exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. So now what happens? Well, we've resolved our issue, right, Dave? Sure. So, yeah, let, let's... Dave, you need a little more apology than that. You've got to cough it up. Buddy. Yeah, it's one of the harder things I have to do, but I really do owe Bob an apology. I wrongfully accused him and his dog, and I'd like to hug you, Bob. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh. Let go, Bob. <laughs> I'm not that sorry. All right, hey, Dave, don't worry. We're not going to let you go away empty-handed on Let's Bowl. You go away with the Let's Bowl prize package consisting of the new bowling shoes, the snazzy new bowling shirt, the shiny new ball, and a brand-new bowling bag. All from Let's Bowl. All right. I get lost, shrub lover. All right, Bob, time now for you to go against our league bowler for the grand prize, which That's is that right. 1991 snowblower. Ooh. He bowls out of Wells Lanes in South St. Paul. Please welcome John Brenneman. Come on out, John. So, uh, John, are you on a league? Yes, sir, a couple of them. So do you like bowling? I love to bowl. Uh huh. Do you get as many strikes with the ladies as, uh, as here at the alley? Every now and then, yeah, a couple times a week. Hey, what is it? Is it the shoes? What is it? The swagger? The bowler swagger? What is it that does it with the ladies? It's the balls. <laughs> All right. 
Okay. All right, here's what's going to happen. <laughs> We're going to let our league bowler throw one ball. You need to match or beat his score. If you do, you will go out of here with a 1991 John Deere snowblower. We're going to let John go first. Say good luck, bowlers. Good luck, bowlers. John's quite the ladies' man, eh, Wally? Yes, so. Ooh. Knocks down seven. Nice power. All right, Bob, come on. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Kind of feels a lot like when I was nude and I locked myself out of my RV at the Brainerd International Raceway. Oh, and he doesn't do it. He knocks down six. All right, come That's on up, everybody. Bad. Hey, Bob, you didn't come win the snowblower, but Dave. I'll tell you what, you did win that package to Duluth and the apology from your neighbor, and you get new bushes besides. All right? Uh, all right. Hey, we want to thank everybody for hanging out with us tonight. We want to give special thanks to the Viking Age Club. And, of course, a very special thanks to our friends, Man Planet. Man Planet. Hey, that's all for tonight. Remember to support your local bowling center and be sure and tune in again next time for another exciting episode of Let's, Let's Bowl. Bowl. You're watching Comedy Central. It's time for some ad-libbing from across the Atlantic. Whose line is it anyway is coming up next. Say, let's go bowling. See the ten shiny pins. Take your aim. What a frame. Here's where the fun begins.